Hey everyone, welcome to High Lonesome Trail. We're out here in Prescott, Arizona, north of downtown Prescott. We're up in the Talking Rock development area and near the Talking Rock Golf Club. Today we're at High Lonesome Trail and I've brought you out here previously when this was just a raw land site. Today we came out to do some uh, 3D modeling, actually some 2D and 3D modeling flying this location as the location is now starting to be under construction. So today we first flew for our ortho mosaic map and we'll actually be including that in here and probably including putting it together as well. After doing the ortho mosaic setup for the two dimensional and three dimensional if we want to with this one, I did a couple of very quick flights for video because we're still establishing how we're gonna be doing our progression report on this one. So we're gonna be documenting this over time as the new home gets built here. And we're gonna be documenting it with an eye to doing progression reporting. So we'll be showing off some before and after changes on the models. And I need to stop for just a second. I am just under attack here. Oh, sweaty? I don't know if it's a yellow jacket or what. <laughs> There was a tarantula hawk flying around. Okay. All right, sorry, we just had an interruption, and as you can see, my uh, safety vest has been taken off because oh, the bees really love to, uh, to come up and check out the safety vest, of the bright orange. So we've got sweat bees and yellow jackets and wasps around. So there you go, that's part of working out here. So as you're seeing through the video and the stills here, we went through and we did our standard workflow. So our standard workflow for progression missions is pretty simple. Number one, we do a flight with an autonomous flight app. Today we used MapPilot Pro so that we could get the images for doing a two-dimensional or three-dimensional model if we want to. After we stopped working with MapPilot Pro and we captured all of the images that we wanted to, the next phase was to do some video. So we always do our orthos first, our video second, and then standard still photography and time-lapse photography third. So when we get back to the office, what does this all mean for me? It means I've got a really easy workflow. I know that the first block of JPEGs that I have are JPEGs captured with my autonomous flight app and for building that two-dimensional or three-dimensional model. After that, the next thing that I'm gonna see off of my SD card is that I have several videos. So those videos will be processed afterward in Final Cut Pro on my Macintosh. Oh, and here comes one of those bees again. They really do dig me. So they know I'm allergic to them, I suppose. So after we're done with the videos, the next block that we're gonna see in the micro SD card is another block of still photos. So those are just standard stills, and sometimes they're stills that are gonna be repeated over and over again. And usually when we're setting up for that, we're using an autonomous flight app like it Litchi. So drone construction reporting is becoming bigger and bigger by the day. And if you're interested in doing uh, drone construction progression reporting, we do have some online classes. So if you go to classes.azdrone.net, you'll actually see some of our tutorials on using something like MapPilot Pro that we use today and on using our two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling applications and on photo editing as well. And we'll be including some video editing down the road. So if you haven't checked out our classes, be sure to follow one of the links. And down in the show notes below, usually when we put our class links up, we also offer a discount to our YouTube subscribers who stop by this channel. So thanks for supporting the channel, by the way, everybody. And just one more thing to let you know. So normally when we think about drone construction, construction uh, progression reporting, boy, that was a mouthful there. Um, usually when we think about that, we think about bigger buildings, multifamily residentials, big warehouses, new office buildings. And what a lot of uh, drone operators forget about is that individual family homes can also be a great market for you. So if you're in an area where new homes are you know, just booming like in the Prescott area here. There are tons of new home builds that are just starting today and that'll be going over the next six months, eight months, 10 months, maybe 12 months, a full year of building, you just never know. But the single family residentials are a great market to get into as well. The construction companies have an interest in working with you and documenting what they've done. Um, the builders and brokers who have arranged for these land sales for these new constructions, 
they have an interest in seeing how the construction's gone. And of course, the owners who are waiting for these uh, homes to be finished can also benefit by seeing exactly where they're at in their construction progression. So don't forget about those individual homes. They can turn into a great market for you, especially if you're in an area with uh, booming home sales and new home builds like the Prescott area. And now I've got to cut this short because these bees seem to want to like fly right into my face here. So I don't know if they're showing up on screen or not, but that's enough of an annoyance today. All right, everybody, the next part of this video, we'll be back in the office. We'll be offloading in accordance with our workflow that we utilize, and then we'll be post-processing. So I think I'll combine a lot of this together for you today, since it's the first time we've been out shooting for a little while. By the way, Prescott, Arizona has been experiencing a pretty large forest fire to the south of the downtown Prescott area in parts of the National Forest and we are operating north of Prescott. We're very far removed from where the temporary flight restriction is. So we always obey, you know, the FAA TFRs and we always pay attention to safety whenever we're doing any of our construction or raw land sites. All right, everybody, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for coming along today. What do you think, Jody? Good. Yeah, okay. I did some video of you talking. Oh, cool. All right, everyone, here we are back in the office after our morning out on location at High Lonesome. And I've already done some offloading um, just to get everything going a little quicker for you. You don't need to see me copying and pasting things. But as I discussed while we were out on location, I said, you know, usually in our workflow, we do three things. And the three things, we usually do our ortho images first right here. And then we do our... Uh, video set, and then finally we do our stills, both standard stills and time-lapse stills. So I have offloaded all this. We've got one other video file, and that video file is what you just watched beforehand, so me out in the field. I just dragged that one on over. But so for today, the title of today's video was a, um, a quick uh, drone construction map. So what happened? Let's uh, let's open this up here. We'll We'll make this one a little bit bigger. And so what we're looking at are all the shots that were captured, okay? So those shots are all JPEGs, and I utilized MapPilot Pro to actually, um, to actually capture all these. So let's open up my downloads folder because I had actually made an uh, image for you. So while we were doing the flight, um, I actually just took a quick screen capture of MapPilot Pro and what it was doing. So it was in the middle of its flight. Now, I can uh, do a screen recording as well, but I don't like overtasking the tablets or the iPhones, especially when it starts getting warmer outside. I don't want the iPhone overheating, so I try not to give it too many jobs. And that is a real issue. So if you ever see your tablet or your phone screen blank out uh, or give you a notification that it's overheating, pay very close attention. You really don't want your drone, you know, 400 feet above ground level and you don't have any information feeding back to your phone or tablet. So we did the flight and I think it took a little over 10 minutes. And while we were flying, so it was uh, it was documenting each of the points. So the uh, reddish orange triangle here, that's the direction that Joan was going in. And you can also see some of the shots that it took. At the time that I snapped this screen, we had 33 images. And in the end, we had a lot more than 33 images. So in the end, let's take a look here. It says that we used 155 images. And I'm going to swap the screens around for you here. So, And so now with the screen swapped, we can see things a little better here. So after offloading everything, I offloaded the orthos, I offloaded the videos, I offloaded the stills. And then the next thing that I did was I pulled up Web ODM on my Mac Mini M1 and I ran a simple model. So, you know, I was going out to collect this. The realtor that I'm dealing with on this particular site let me know that some of the concrete has gone in and now they're getting ready to actually pour the slab in the near future. We will be flying that and we will be documenting that. But I wanted to share this one with you. I did a very quick rendering with Web ODM. I will also be utilizing Metashape as well for this. So we'll be testing between the two of them and seeing what we get out of them. 
So I created a new project. So Web ODM, pretty straightforward. Once you're into it, upper right hand corner, add a project, give the project a name. After you've named the project, you can select your images and ground control points. And once you select those, um, you can actually select how you want it processed. And when the processing is done, you'll have a little completed bar here. So we did the default settings on Web ODM. And so uh, ODM stands for Open Drone Mapping, if you're new to Web ODM. And this is one of the most low cost um, 2D and 3D modeling applications out there. It is basically free since it's open source. And if you want uh, pre-made installers for you so you don't have to know how to do things through the command line, they do have a Windows download and a Mac download. We're on the Mac right now. So I ran this, processed it, and it took for the 154 images, it took a whopping 10 minutes and 15 seconds. I did resize the images so that I didn't stress the system too much because this is just a quick one. And I will be going back through re-rendering this and um, then compiling it into my next presentation for the clients. So we do have in here download assets. We can download our ortho photo a surface model, we can download our point cloud and we can share the point cloud on other locations. Textured model as well, our camera parameters and camera shots and a quality report. You can also download all of the assets. So basically we can get a GeoTIFF out of this. That's number one here, that's the ortho photo. And GeoTIFFs and two dimensional models are very valuable on construction sites. You don't have to do 3D models, but those 2D models can tell you a lot about the changes in the job site over time. If you're repeatedly doing these flights for your clients to document the full build from cradle to grave, you're probably going to be out there maybe at least once a month, maybe several times a month, especially on some of these residentials where they do come together faster than large builds like office buildings and things. Those things take a long time. They're also really good long-term contracts. So if you can get one, great for you. Uh, we've done a couple, and I do like having those types of long-term projects. All right, let's quickly view this map here. So there it is filling in right now. So there is our ortho. And um, just to be sure in here, what I'm going to do is turn the base maps off here just so that you can get a look at the ortho. So the big thing that I was after today is you know developing an overlay from our previous flight several months ago to where now they've got the, uh, the pilings in here and... You can see we've got our base area for the home so you can get a feel for what the home's looking like looks like we're going to have a garage over here on the left hand side and a single car garage right here um that's my guess on this at least we can also see some of the conduits in here there were two gentlemen out on site today they were pounding down the pad so in the background we were hearing thud 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 um for quite a while while we we're on location you can also see the bulldozer that they had just moved out of the way and we can see the neighboring property so i did keep map pilot pro flying on the property lines it does have some overlap that's why you know we have overlap um baked right into these things so with that overlap we did capture some of the neighboring house so they are a little close together there um let's go ahead and let's pull up that Google hybrids map again, and we can see where it lays out in here. Uh, we also have the options to check out the surface model with default setup. So we get a pretty good idea of the area that's level in here, and we can see height of land up here, and then lowest parts of land down here in this area as well. So Web ODM is a great solution if you're brand new to mapping and modeling. You don't have a couple of thousand dollars to lay out. Um, for Pix4D or Metashape on your desktop. And you also don't want to sign up for subscriptions that can cost up to $100 a month. And you just want to start experimenting with this, you might want to look into Web ODM. All right. While we're around here, let's go back to the dashboard really quick. I'm going to go back down to the tasks again. And we're going to go ahead and view that 3D model as well. So we had a lot of overlap in this one because I just, you know, we were after the ortho mosaic. And um, we got the ortho mosaic I was looking for, but let's go down to our textured model. We're gonna add the texture onto this to clean things up. We were viewing the point cloud before, and now here is the 3D model view. So you can see the slope, the height of land up on the circle here. Uh, this is going to be a rather steep driveway coming right down into here. And then they still have a further drop off onto a dirt double track. Um, basically toward the north side of the property. 
So this one came out really good. And like I said, it only took 10 minutes and some change to render this on WebODM. So I am happy to uh, have WebODM available to me now. I do use Metashape regularly as well. But when rendering things very quickly, just to give yourself a feel for did everything come together nicely, it certainly did. This almost motivates me to get a uh, new uh, uh, laptop to bring along and do low resolution setups in the field so that I can see that we did cover everything. Maybe that'll be something down the road for us as, uh, as the business here grows further. But, um, but yeah, given that I had a 10 minute rendering on 154 images um, for this home site, that is something that you could stay out in the field and actually process. And then if you missed something or you needed to get more detail, you could always refly the site afterward. So there we go. There is our uh, quick uh, drone construction map for the day. So we brought you out in the field. We brought you back here. You got to see, yes, Rich really does it this way. So I'm just uh, changing gears here. I'm going to open this one up. So we have the high lonesome still. So I got JPEGs and DNGs just to get a feel for the overall site and, you know, generate some images that we can use in our final presentation. So if you're interested in this one, you found this, um, you found yourself feeling a little curious about this, keep in mind that in time, let me pull up Google Chrome again. And um, you can always stop by seemybuild.com. And that's where we're doing some of these presentations. We're testing new templates for deliverables to clients. And if we go under see my build, um, you know, we can see, let's see, is that one in here yet? No, I've actually got it hidden. But I will be making the um, High Lonesome one public in the very near future so that you can see the layouts that we do. And let me just click on Sky Ranch just as another example. So after we've compiled and post-processed all of this, we usually put together a nice presentation for the clients. And we've started using some new tools to allow the clients to download directly from the website so they can watch their flight video. They can check out their ortho mosaic. Um, they can check out their before and after ortho mosaics. For some clients, we do 360 degree property tours as well. And finally, we usually collect up a bunch of still images, both standard stills as well as time lapse stills as well. And all of this right from the website is easily available to our customers to uh, download and have uh, and have their own records of all the documentation work that we've done for them from start to finish. All right, everybody, I hope you found this one fun, informative, and it's got you thinking about your workflow process. Don't forget over on classes.azdrone.net, we do have a series of classes, and one of our newest ones is for drone construction workflow. What we do from the moment the customer calls us to when we're finally delivering to them. So pop on by classes.azdrone.net, there's a link down below. There's a link in the info card right up above. And um, we also do offer coupon codes to our subscribers here on YouTube. So be sure to make sure that you uh, grab the coupon code and then pop on over to classes.azdrone.net. And also keep in mind, all of the classes that we have listed there have free previews. So it gives you an idea of how we're going to be doing the instruction and if it's going to be of value to you. We'll see you again really soon. Have a great week and have fun flying.